Welcome to our third webinar in our series of World, Printer, World Printers Forum webinars of Van Ifra. My name is Inge Rafn Olafsson and I'm the director of the World Printers Forum. With me is Laurel Vennen, from, uh, project coordinator from Van Ifra. She's working with me in this production today. Uh, today we have two production directors that will discuss the situation in the respective parts of the world. They will also discuss how they're tackling these times and what measures are being taken. Uh, before I present our speakers, I just want to mention that Van Ifra has a stream of webinars in our webpage. We've also planned webinars in, in, our, in our future and we also have had in the past weeks. You can all find, find all these webinars on our webpage, van-ifra.org. Org. We also have a dedicated web page on the coronavirus newsroom where we have uh, news items and, and uh, things dedicated to the coronavirus in the newsroom. Uh, and uh, I would also look, uh, urge you to, to look at what events we have on, in, the, in the coming days and weeks. We have a media panel where I urge you to, to sign up if you, if you can. There is a, we will have that on the web page uh, shortly. And I would also like to draw, like we've done in the past, past webinars, I'll also like to draw your attention to that uh, half of the world is streaming at the moment, so we might have some technical problems. And if you have sound problems, you can't hear us, you can call into the meeting. There is a phone number in the meeting invite and that you can use. Uh, if I may present our uh, speakers today, we have Mr. Lim Sui Yao, Senior Vice President of uh, Head of SPH Production Division. Sui Yao has been with the SPH for 20 years. He joined production in January 2000 as production manager. Throughout his career, career with SPH, he has helmed various sections in operation, engineering, materials, and newsprint purchases. He was appointed division head in September 2011. He was involved in major projects with the company's printing presses and print processes, such as the Goss color liner upgrades in 2011, Marl Ronland Unicef 2008, and KPA Commander in 2002. He was also responsible for building the state-of-the-art printing presses and mailroom systems. This year, the production division started to print commercial products with the purchases of digital press and related post-print equipment. Sui Yao graduated with the Bachelor of Science in Industrial and Manufacturing Engineering from Oregon State University in the US. He also holds a higher national diploma in printing and publishing publishing production from London College of Printing in the UK. Our other speaker comes from the New York Times. His name is Todd Sosia. He's the Senior Vice President of Print Products and Services. Uh, Todd Sosia joined the New York Times in 2005 and is currently Senior Vice President of Print Products and Services. He has responsibility for the Times College uh, Print Production Facility in New York. 26 national print sites, nationwide distribution and transportation, New York Times magazine production, newsprint pr purchasing, and all pre-press departments. Prior to joining the New York Times, Todd held a position of vice president of newspaper distribution for both Lastra America and Western Lithotech. He's a graduate of Rochester Institute of Technology with degree in newspaper operations management. The format of the webinar is the same as the last two Wednesdays. Uh, our speakers will talk for 10 to 15 minutes each. You can post questions at any time in the Q&A box below that you see in your, in your, in your window. Uh, and we are testing polling. There's a, you see there's a polling there. We were testing that now. So we, if you have one or two pollings, two polls during the, the presentation, please answer them because we want to see how this works. Uh, I will start to give the word to Mr. Sui Yao and if he can start his presentation. Here you are. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, uh, I'm Sui Yao from Singapore. 
I'll start with sharing uh, what we have or what we have done in Singapore. Can you see the slides? Hello? Yes, we can see the slides, it's fine. Okay. Uh, just some background, the timeline for COVID-19 events in Singapore. So what you see on top over the, here is actually what has happened in Singapore since January. And below is uh, what we have done in SPH production. So our first case of uh, COVID case actually happened on the 23rd of January. And a day before that, we have set up a task force. The government has set up a task force. Okay, and that was also during the Chinese New Year period whereby many Singaporeans or the Asian people has gone back to China. Uh, has, so it was also the start of the uh, pandemic in China. Okay, on 7th of February, the Singapore uh, government actually raised the alert to orange, to orange uh, alert. So three days later, on 10th of February, we started to plan and uh, deploy our split plant operations and split shift operations. Okay, and the four days later, on the 14th of February, we have completed uh, our deployment and we started the split plant and split shift operation. And one thing to highlight is that uh, in March 18, our neighbor, the Malaysian government, actually locked down the whole of Malaysia. So we have colleagues and staff uh, who commute between Singapore and Malaysia every day. Those uh, staff, some of them are being locked off and they can't come to work. So whoever that comes to Singapore, we have to find accommodation for them and they uh, have to continue staying in Singapore since 18th of March. Okay, uh, just some background to the split plant operation because our ob objective is to create a physical distance between the teams of staff so as to minimize exposure to the virus. And we have uh, also, in the event of one team is being quarantined, the damage can be minimized and the other teams can be deployed to take over some of the work. Okay. In SPH, we actually have two printing plants within the same location. So we split the two plants into blue and orange teams. We also staggered the working hours for the shift and we stop the shift rotation between the within the two plants, meaning that in the in the normal environment, we actually rotate the day shift and the night shift on a regular basis. And we work for the night shift because most newspapers are printed at night. We actually work 12 hour shift starting from 6 p.m. until 6 a.m. in the morning. So we also uh, split that working hours for the two plants. So one plant will start earlier at 5.30 and it stop at 5.30 a.m. And the other plant will actually uh, start at 6 p.m. and they start, stop at five, uh, 6 a.m. in the morning. So within each plant itself, we have also separated into press, mill room, and loading bay. So staff from the three areas are physically separated within the shift. And for transports, car parks, locker rooms, pantries, and smoking areas, we also separated the areas. And the advice to the staff is uh, on social distancing when they are off duties. So for this planning itself, we take into consideration the skill of the workers and how, how do we back up each shift and team as we go along if one area is affected by the virus. So in, in Singapore, there are actually uh, two directives from the government. One is the usual quarantine order whereby uh, an individual is isolated and they have to stay at, actually at the government facility or hospital and this is uh, legally enforced. The other thing we have done is actually a uh, stay home notice. So in a stay home notice case, the person who is issued a stay home notice by the government, they have to be home for 14 days and their movement has to be monitored. They cannot leave their residence at any time. And if they are sick or they show symptoms of uh, illness or breath, uh, short of breath, they have to inform the government or whoever is tracking their movement. 
So for SPH, we actually go one step further. What we have done is we uh, implemented a so-called leave of absence. And this is not a government directive, but another level of precaution that SPH put in to prevent the, uh, the people who come into close contact with suspected case or people who are issued with stay-at-home notice because the government directive itself does not include people staying in the same household. Let's say a, a house member is under stay-at-home notice. The other members of the family can still proceed their work in the usual manner. So we put in a buffer uh, precaution to make sure that uh, we prevent staff from who has close contact with suspected case from coming to work. And this has been clearly communicated to the staff. So the staff, when they come into contact with someone, say, uh, in the same household or a neighbor who is of a suspected case, they will actually report to us that, you know, uh, they are in close proximity to a suspected case or an actual uh, confirmed case. And then we will decide and tell the staff to stay home. Okay, until uh, you know, the case is clear, then we get the, the staff to come back to work. So that kind of put a, another level of precautions to prevent the staff uh, who are, may be affected by the virus to come to work. And the other thing we do very constantly to the, uh, is communication. Because through the whole experience of what we see from January to March, constant communication to the staff is essential. Okay, we actually have uh, daily communication to the staff on what are the new guidelines, the new policies, and the staff have to under understand that you know, the efforts that we're putting in place is to prevent transmission of COVID-19 uh, virus in the workplace. So all the staff to date has been very responsive and responsible in uh, you know, corporate, cooperating to ensure that we do not have any case in the uh, printing plant itself. So we talk about the new guidelines and policies give, uh, give uh, advice by the government because as the situation change, the Singapore government uh, constantly will enforce or tighten the, the, uh, the quarantine or, or certain guidelines and then we have to actually follow with that. And also for every day, we have to take uh, make sure that the health status of the staff at work is actually they are healthy. We take temperature twice a day. And people with high temperature above 38 degrees uh, Celsius, we have to report, ask them to consult a doctor or ask them to go home. And that's how we conduct our daily work. So to date, actually, we are fortunate that there are no cases in the plant. Okay, uh, that's all I have about the prevention of uh, the things that, that is going on in the Singapore plan. Thank you, Sui Yao. It was, it was very informative and, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions later on. We'll take the questions after both the speakers have, have spoken. Uh, now, if, you, if Todd, you can take over. Todd? Are you there, Todd? Uh, okay. Can you hear me? Todd? Todd seems to be having a little bit of a problem connecting. He was here a minute ago. Maybe he, he, like I mentioned, he is the senior vice president of print and pro, print products and services at the New York Times. He has a extensive uh, experience in this business and, and has been uh, working for the New York Times quite a long time, since two thousand and five, uh, and. Uh, his responsibility is uh, he has is, is administrating at least 26 national print sites in the U US. He's in charge of all the uh, all the uh, 
of the print sites and uh, let me check out one minute, sorry. Laurel, can you unmute uh, Todd first? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, I can't, can't access that somehow. Todd, can you hear us now? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Sorry, right. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. You can. Did you you have some slides? Didn't you want to show? Yeah, us? yeah. Can you see the slides? I'm sorry. Exactly. They are coming up, I guess. Ah. Hold on one second. That's not letting me share right now. Mm. Mm. Once more. You see that? Yes, we do. Okay. Great. Hold on one second. Can you see that? Yes, we can. My apologies. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, I guess good afternoon, good evening in some parts of the world. Um, my name is Todd Sosha. As Inga mentioned, I'm the Senior Vice President of Print Products for uh, the New York Times, and I want to give you a little bit of an update on kind of where we stand relative to the COVID virus, uh, what we've done in terms of planning, and a little bit of an overview on kind of our infrastructure uh, across the country. So. We have three, um, three major um, um, locations in the United States, uh, not counting our news bureaus, obviously, that are spread across the country, but where our corporate office is located in Manhattan, New York City. Um, it's where we house our newsroom, most all of our business functions, advertising, marketing, um, and uh, support, support function systems and technology. We have a College Point printing facility that's located in, in Flushing, New York. Um, and we have our shared service center, which is located in Norfolk, Virginia, which is where a lot of our financial operations, um, accounts payable, purchasing, et cetera, are located. As we, watch the, uh, as we watch the COVID virus and we're monitoring it across the world from the Far East um, in kind of late January and into February, uh, the senior leadership team began um, discussing and planning for uh, the spread to the United States and began the process of, of working on our kind of a remote working or distributed working environment. But it really began in earnest um, um, the beginning first week of March. Um, many of our departments uh, across the company as part of our normal business continuity plans uh, routinely um, worked, had people work from home or some staff work from home. Um, and as part of our business continuity plan, it was always about, you know, this, this particular site was not uh, available or operational and how would we effectuate change to be able to, to work from home. But as mentioned, it really began the beginning of, of March where every department across, uh, across the company began extensive work from home drills to flush out any issues or obstacles. Um, again, many were doing it, but we never did it on the scale where the entire uh, company would be working from home. So we began that the first week of March. Um, and then on March 11th, uh, as you know, the, the WHO declared the coronavirus a pandemic. On that very same day, we issued a policy requiring all our, all our employees whose job functions would allow to begin working from home effective Friday, March the 13th. All our departments and most all of our employees have been working remotely since. Um, 
And, you know, it's, it's a, just a, a monumental change. I mean, our entire newsroom now is uh, since actually the evening of March the 12th, uh, our entire print hub, our entire digital product is all being put together and the editorial product is being closed remotely. In many cases from, from several states, New Jersey, New York, um, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, where employees are, you know, distributed across the, you know, the, really the tri-state area. Um, and we've been doing that since, uh, since March the 13th. And our College Point facility, um, it's our printing facility, and obviously most, suffice it to say, most departments and most employees cannot work from home. Um, we, there are some departments that are housed in our College Point printing facility, our newspaper layout, makeup departments, our uh, color ad services, and our publishing distribution center, which is really the, tr the transmission hub with which we transmit files to all of our print sites, uh, both our College Point plan as well as our 25 national print sites. Um, but most, we can't print papers, we can't insert papers, and we can't deliver papers from home. So we develop plans and implemented procedures to try and keep our employees safe, um, all the while trying to keep the, uh, the facility operational. What do we do? Um, many of these are not new. I suspect many of the people on the line today um, are doing many, if not all of these. Uh, but we began uh, temperature screening for all, for everyone that enters the facility. So following the CDC guidelines, uh, anyone that uh, has a, a temperature of 100.4 Fahrenheit is not allowed to work. Um, anyone that that's, uh, has a normal temperature is allowed then to enter the facility and report to work. We've increased the frequency and cleaning and sanitizing of the department of the entire plant, concentrating on high touch point areas, doorknobs and door handles and, and elevator buttons and, uh, um, and, and doing it two to three times a day. Um, we've provided hand sanitizers and gloves throughout the plant. We have uh, suspended all tours of the facility. We've eliminated all non-essential visitors to the plant. And we've instituted social distancing guidelines to eliminate uh, groups from gathering in, you know, break rooms in the cafeteria and locker rooms, et cetera. Give you an idea in terms of our infrastructure. As mentioned, we have uh, our College Point facility um, in, in Flushing, New York. But we also have 25 um, national print sites uh, spread across the United States. With the exception of College Point, these 25 uh, national print sites are all contract print relationships, meaning that in the Chicago market, we have a contract print relationship with the Chicago Tribune, and in San Francisco, the San Francisco Chronicle, LA Times, Dallas Morning News, Houston Chronicle, et cetera. So all of these, um, all of our national print sites are all you know, third-party providers, and, and suffice it to say that each one of these um, each one of these print sites are typically part of a ma other major um, newspaper chain, and they're going through the very same things uh, that 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 we are, um, probably to a lesser extent in terms of what we're seeing in New York, because clearly we are, um, you know, that kind of the epicenter of the virus um, in the United States is in New York right now. But uh, this gives you a little idea in terms of what we have in terms of distribution, or excuse me, in, in terms of production sites across the, across the United States. Our distribution network, um, all of our nationwide distribution, including in New York, is all done by contract distributors. We, we do not own or operate um, a distribution network um, that's owned by the New York Times. These are all contract relationships. We have over 350 home delivery markets across the United States, 255 different, uh, over 255 home delivery distributors, over 270 wholesalers, 185 transportation to vendors, and over 35,000 carriers who touch our product daily. So in an effort to protect our carriers, um, to protect carriers, our distributors are, are um, you know, increasing the frequency of cleaning other distribution centers. They are providing gloves and hand sanitizers um, to their carriers. Uh, many are staggering their arrival times of the carriers to the depots to eliminate congregation. Um, they're also limiting the number of carriers allowed into a given distribution center at a time. And some have instituted kind of grab and go policies whereby a carrier would drive up, don't even enter the, enter the di distribution center or the depot. Their car or truck is loaded for them and off they go to eliminate, you know, having to actually enter, um, enter the distribution facility. In terms of impacts thus far, I mean, to date, we have not had uh, 
any staffing related issues at our College Point facility. We have had one College Point employee who has tested positive. He's cur um, currently recovering at home. Um, we have not had any material production or distribution thus far, uh, any related issues anywhere in the country thus far. We have seen, we have seen a loss of, uh, uh, of obviously of single copy retail sales due to the closure of many of our transportation hubs and airport retailers and the closure of many you know, non-essential businesses really across the country. Readership is very, very strong. Um, Newsroom is doing a fantastic job in terms of putting out a great product. Um, we haven't really seen any adverse impact on our subscription growth. Matter of fact, we've had a, you know, two pretty good pro positive weeks. Uh, however, we have seen a slowdown in advertising bookings, which obviously we associate with the uncertainty and anxiety of the virus and the closure of many retailers and many non-essential businesses across the United States. But it's, you know, over the course of the past three weeks, uh, you know, we've, in addition to the country being on its ear, we, we've changed so many processes and procedures across the company. And, uh, you know, really proud of the staff of, of, of kind of where we're at and the fact that, you know, thus far we have not had any material impacts. Um, we have a long ways to go. Um, we're probably a couple of weeks based on the data and what we're hearing from uh, um, health authorities in terms of hitting the apex here in New York. And, and then, you know, we suspect this to start moving, you know, from the coast across the country. So we, uh, we're, we're still early in this and we still have a lot of work to do, but uh, so far pretty proud of, of, uh, of what we've been able to accomplish thus far. So that's... All I have, I don't know, Inga, if you want to turn it over to questions, I think that's next. Thank you, Todd. It was very inform informative from, from both of you. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, there are some questions that we have. I just want to start off by saying we have uh, around 84 participants in our, uh, in our uh, webinar today from all over the world, quite a lot from Asia, as well as the US and also from Europe as well. So people from all over the world in our in our meeting today. If uh, I can ask maybe Sweet Sviyao uh, in the beginning, uh, you mentioned about the staff shortage because you have people coming from Malaysia. Is are you having problems about the uh, skilled workers, skilled workers that uh, you are not getting from Malaysia to your to Singapore because of the lockdown? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. Yep. Did you hear my question? Uh, yes. Okay. okay, about 7% of our staff are actually from Malaysia. Okay. And because Singapore and Malaysia is very close, we have about 300,000 Malaysians coming to Singapore to work on a daily basis. Okay, so 7%. Uh, in terms of skilled workers, yes, we rely on uh, the Malaysian staff as part of our skilled workers. So in this case, we are actually 3% short because of the shutdown, uh, because a number of staff were stuck in Malaysia, but half of them managed to come out. So our shortage is not that critical. It's about 3% right now. Okay. Just to follow up on that, because I, Todd mentioned that they're taking the temperature of the employees in the workplace, so to, to see if they have temperature. Do you do that with your workers? Yes, likewise we do that. Uh, first of all, we advise our staff not to come to work if they don't feel well. We just call in and say that they are be, uh, consulting the doctors. And those who come to work, we take temperature twice a day. And for any delivery or any other uh, non-SPH staff coming in, they also have to take their temperature at the gut house before they can enter the premises. Great, thank you. Uh, maybe I can ask both of you, and I'll, I'll start with you, Svia, and then Todd can take over. Uh, are, this, are the employees or the, the people in the, in the print, print location working with masks and gloves? Uh, no, with, they are working with not working with masks uh, for the print area, they are not. For the mail room, they are not because they are not facing any external uh, vendors or so forth. The staff at the loading bay who has to face the vendors or newspaper delivery every day, they work with masks all the time. Okay, what about you, Does Todd? Does that answer your question? Yes, it's good. 
What are you, what do you talk? Yeah, um, no, we, we are not, um, uh, in some areas they are using masks. We're not, we're not, not entirely across the facility. Um, we offer gloves um, and in most, most departments, the employees are wearing, are wearing gloves, but uh, um, you know, not, not universally, but they are, they are, we offer them and they're, um, you know, they're available to employees. Okay, thank you. Uh, just uh, to, to follow up on that, maybe uh, uh, for both of you as well, then Top, you can start and, and Svija takes so over. The circulation for both papers, uh, are they, what, what is it affecting the circulation, the, 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 the pandemic? Well, we're, we're um, you know, we're largely a home delivered product. Um, but as I mentioned in my presentation, we have seen, um, you know, impacts to our single copy or retail business as a result of, you know, of the closure of the major transportation hubs and, and um, you know, airports with, you know, significantly lower traffic, the airport retailers um, and just non-essential businesses and retail outlets. So we, we, have, we have seen some impacts there. Um, but like I said, you know, we're, we're largely, we're largely a, uh, a home delivered product. So. Sweet. Okay, for, for us, actually we have 11 publications. We are the only uh, newspaper printer in Singapore. So we print 11 publications in four languages. And uh, largely our home subscription continues, but some of the titles are actually retail sales. So those will be affected. And uh, like what is happening elsewhere in the world, our airport subscription, our airline subscription has fallen. The hotel subscription has fallen. And on the other hand, uh, the digital version of the newspaper actually it has some traction. We are getting more readers from the digital papers. Very good, very good. Uh, here's a question that uh, is being asked to both of you and it is, uh, what is the reduction in advertising revenue in, in both cases, in the print editions approximately, and also in reduction of number of advertising supplements? Could you maybe start with that, Todd? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to, can't say it specifically in terms of what the rates are, but obviously there's certain categories of advertising that have been impacted. Um, you know, with the closure of Broadway and theaters and movie theaters, et cetera, a lot of that has been impacted. Um, so we, you know, we have have seen uh, we have seen impacts there in terms of advertising supplements or FSIs or freestanding inserts. We um, it, it, th that's a pretty small piece of our business, but we have seen and some of our commercial customers um, that we print for um, some declines in in, in uh, advertising supplements. Um, because of the closure of the non, you know, non-essential businesses. So we have, we have seen, we have seen that with some of our commercial customers. Okay, so yeah. Uh, for the month of March, uh, we do see uh, the decline in advertisements. In fact, it's uh, quite across all sectors of the advertising market. But on the other hand, we do have an increase of advertisements from the government because they advertise on the papers every day, communicate getting to the people on what is happening and uh, advisors on uh, wearing masks, consulting doctors and how to prevent the COVID-19 uh, virus. So that portion has increased, but in terms of entertainment in, in the other sectors, it has all declined. Yeah, right. There's one also question about the circulation worldwide because New York Times thought this is of course a, a brand that is known all around the world and being sold all around the world. How is the circulation worldwide to you? I mean, has, how has that been impacted in, in, in these? Well, I think, you know, I, I think it's, uh, you know, because of the international uh, edition is, um, there's a lot of amenity sales and retail sales. So yes, I mean, we have seen the retail aspect impacted um, as we have in the US. So it has been impacted, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you, I mean, there, here's a question about plastic, because we know that plastic is, is probably more prone than, than uh, paper to, to spread the virus. Uh, do you still wrap your paper in plastic? Yes, we do. What about you, Sweet Suyao? 
the Singapore papers, we do not write in plastics most of the time. It's only for overseas shipments that we, we write in plastics. We still continue to do that for the overseas shipments. Okay, thanks. Uh, one more about the, here's a question about, about consumables. Uh, have you encountered any problems of a shortage of paper or solvents or such things? Uh, you know, from the Times perspective, we, we have not. We've been, you know, going back into probably, you know, mid-February. Mid, mid we were in contact with all of our key raw material um, and, and supply vendors. And, and in some cases, we, um, we, of the key materials, we, we ramped up uh, our on-site inventories. Um, you know, we're limited in terms of what we can do on ink in terms of our storage capacity, but our ink, ink, tank, ink uh, tanks are topped off every week. Um, we're, you know, we have a, a news print that comes in, probably 50% of it direct shipped into the facility from mostly from Canada. Um, we also have a local warehouse where we stock, so we're, we're in good shape on, on, um, on newsprint. And we've, we bumped up our inventories on plates and other key materials, but we haven't had uh, we haven't had any issues thus far. We don't foresee any in the future. Okay, so yeah. Have... Like, likewise, uh, we don't foresee. I mean, we do not have any inventory uh, issues with direct materials because in house minimum we have about two months since the situation started. So we have been uh, buying more materials, but we do see a delay in shipments from. Uh, the, the logistic delay in terms of shipments coming from Europe or even coming from the nearby uh, countries like China or, or Australia. We, so, we see some delays over there, but in-house we already have two months, so we are okay going forward. Great. Here's, a, here's an interesting question. That uh, uh, Here's a question say many major newspapers, including us, the Daily Tanti, have introduced spraying disinfectants uh, on papers. So they are trying to, to kill the virus with, with disinfectants. Have, have, you, have you done that or, 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 or are you, is there any, any thinking about doing that? Uh, no, we have not done that. Uh, nor, nor have we. Okay, great. Uh, I have a question for, for Todd because you mentioned that you you rapidly and probably the same in, 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 in Singapore. So maybe question for both of you, because of course this is a, 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 a very big uh, thing for everybody now that when they're moving their office home. So that is, a, is, is of course uh, a question of infrastructure as well in the societies. Can they handle the broadband? Can they handle everything that is involved being in a home office? Did the Times have everything in place? I mean, did everybody have equipment, et cetera? Um, I would say, you know, most everyone had laptops, um, but not everybody. Um, so we've been um, outfitting all the folks, you know, with laptops that didn't have them. We've tried to be accommodating to our employees in terms of urban ergonomic issues, in terms of, you know, um, my additional monitors and, and that kind of thing that might help them facilitate working from home. Um, that's been a that's been a big uh, um, you know, that's been a big project for our systems and technology group, obviously, and, and relatively short notice trying to get um, and they've done a, you know they've done a great job. Um, so we're actually direct direct shipping or have been direct shipping, you know, monitors and mouses and keyboards and and whatnot uh, for those that needed it. But for the most part, everyone had laptops. Um, so it was just really kind of a you know, when you go to this, when you go to this total remote working environment, it's all the, you know, the applications and depending on what area of the company you're working on and being able to access um, and making sure that everything is capable of doing it, it you know, because we've had issues where, yeah, 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 everything, everything works great until, until you have to do it. So we really wanted to, we spent a lot of time uh, flushing that out and doing, as I mentioned earlier, doing drills from home to make sure that we were fully functional remotely. You know, in terms of the, uh, you know, kind of the bandwidth or the internet connectivity, um, we've not really had any issues with that. I think the bigger concern um, is not necessarily bandwidth, but rather if there happens to be, 
you know, a local outage in a given area where you're, you know, you're relying on the local provider, whether it's AT&T or Verizon or whoever the company might be that's providing connectivity to the house, kind of the last mile connectivity. Um, and, and the fear there, obviously, if there's an outage and, and would the carriers be able to respond quickly enough to get the outage, you know, get the issue or outage corrected. But we haven't seen any um, um, kind of bandwidth related issues as a result of, of, of working from home thus far. Okay, Suyo, what do you say? Yeah, so far, I think our situation in Singapore is similar to what New York is facing, uh, what TARP has done for the New York Times, because in terms of infrastructure, uh, we are okay. Our Wi Fi and the home uh, connectivity is good. Our technical team has actually started doing this since February. Uh, so by about 30 to 40% of the uh, staff right now is working from home. And then uh, the other staff uh, are actually working in two different locations. That is for uh, like editorials, the marketing staff, the uh, some other uh, colleagues who can work from home. So most of the divisions has more than half the people or one third of the people working from home as of now. Uh, and so far, the tech team has done a, a good job, you know, connecting everyone. At any point of time, there'll be a, maybe about close to 800 to 1,000 people who are logging onto the system. So uh, they have been doing okay. And for the production side, because we have to be physically uh, present, so only about 2% of our staff is working from home for the production side. Okay. Uh, here's a question about from for both of you. So uh, I'll let you start, Sui. Uh, okay. Can you introduce? Did you introduce some special features into your printed paper as a reaction to the coronavirus? Special features. So far, we have uh, no request on that. But what we have done is actually uh, the flip uh, on the page that like we have cut half the page as a. a a flip over on the cover page. That portion has been booked by the government advertisements. So it's like a semi wrap across the paper. It is on our main papers like the Straits Times and the uh, Zhao Bao. So that is what we have uh, done and is the customer's request for now. There's no other special requests so far. Yeah, we've, um, you know, we're running a lot of, uh, I would say, special sections, special reports associated with the uh, COVID virus. We have a um, in print as well as, you know, a, our coronavirus hub, uh, which we've made uh, access free, um, you know, across the world, uh, which is a very comprehensive and very detailed, uh, you know, ongoing live update um, um, on the status of the COVID virus. But we we've have had you know, a number of kind of special section, print special sections tied to it um, in the print version. And, um, you know, other than some section consolidations, we, we've, we really haven't, uh, other than the COVID virus, we haven't uh, done any material changes in the print product. Okay, so you haven't, haven't uh, decreased the number of pages or decreased the number of colors or anything like that? No, I mean, our, uh, you know, there, there's been some, obviously some advertising impact, um, but you know, our news hole with what's going on around the world and around the country, um, you know, is, is, is as robust, I think, as it ever has and maybe more. Great. From an editorial standpoint. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's a question for, 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 for Todd. Uh, has the New York Times seen some subscribers canceling due to the fear of transmission of virus? Um, we have had some folks that, uh, you know, some limited number that have, uh, you know, put their uh, um, subscription maybe on vacation hold as a result of it, but, uh, you know, not, not anything material now. Okay, great. What do you think, Sui Yao? Is it, is it similar with you? So far, we have no direct, uh, I mean, we do not have subscribers cancelling stating specifically because of uh, the virus. No, we don't face that. But we, we do see more readers coming into the digital paper. Okay. 
uh, how are you coping with the drop in advertising? I mean, of course, advertising is, is the lifeblood of, of newspapers, of course, but I mean, some of them have very strong uh, subscriber base and, and I, I guess both of you are in that situation or, or what, is, what is your situation? Yeah, you know, I think from the Times perspective, I think unlike maybe some of the major, you know, metropolitan papers, our, uh, you know, our print revenue stream is largely um, on the um, subscriber base as opposed to the advertiser base. So um, I would say we're probably better prepared for a decline in advertising than, than maybe most major metropolitan papers. Um, so I think that's, that, you know, it's a benefit of our subscription model. Uh, for the, the titles that we have, it depends because some are subscriber titles, uh, subscription titles, the others are actually quite dependent on advertisements. So various publications actually uh, face the situation differently. So those who are actually uh, very much uh, like an advertiser base, we do uh, face a problem on those titles. Okay. I think we, we touched a little bit on that, this point about the materials and, and, and uh, how, so people are asking here, how is this, how is your supply chain uh, been impacted by the, the coronavirus and, and how do you expect it to, to be in the future? Yeah, I mean, as mentioned, we haven't really seen any, um, you know, material issues uh, in terms of overall materials or key supplies. Uh, we're in constant contact with with our vendors, um, and you know, as mentioned, we have increased uh, inventories of key key supplies and materials. Uh, but we, you know, we feel we're in pretty good shape right now. We don't don't foresee, uh, you know, we don't foresee any issues um, in the future. Okay. Yeah. Uh, likewise, in in Singapore, we don't see that because in terms of uh, what we have in house is minimum two months. For newsprint, we even have up to about four months of newsprint. So plates and all the other direct materials are fine. Chemical-wise, we are actually trying to catch up on some of the supplies because they come from Malaysia or they are coming from the nearby countries. So that uh, we, we are trying to actually order more, but it, we already have two months on standby, so we are okay. We, I do, we don't see a, a actually... A, what you call any big disruption in the supply chain. Okay. Uh, there's a question also to you, Todd, about the, uh, of course, the, the New York City is the epicenter now at the, uh, for, the, for the virus. And, and you, like you said, you expect it to spread in the next, or in the coming months. Uh, how do you think the, the, the other, uh, I mean, the other papers and, and the other cities are prepared? Well, we're, you know, I, I, I can say that I'm on um, bi-weekly calls with my colleagues at the other, you know, major newspaper companies, Gannett, you know, Tribune, McClatchy, um, Hearst, and, you know, they're all going through the same thing that we are in terms of planning and, and um, they uh, are instituting many of the same things that we are and have instituted the many of the same things that we have. Um, you know, obviously, I would say, you know, everyone's concerned, um, but I think they're, you know, our, our partners, because we rely on them, right? I mean, from a, not only from a, outside of New York City, all of our print sites, as mentioned, are contract print relationships, and all of our distribution across the country is contract print relationships. So um, we rely on, a, you know, from a Times perspective, we rely on our third party providers, both from a print and distribution standpoint. So uh, we're in constant contact with them. And, um, you know, I think they're doing a good job from a, from a preparation standpoint. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, there is also a question about to both of you, and then I'll maybe have, have you taught to start with this one, is the contingency plans with, with the, for instance, for the plants, if, if, if too many of the employees fall sick and, and it's not operational. I mean, it, do, we, does, does, do your operation or do your... Uh, do your companies both have contingency, contingency plans for those events? Yes. So, you know, separate of the COVID, um, the, the, this COVID uh, virus situation, we have, you know, business continuity plans for all of our print sites, um, specifically for our New York uh, plant being our largest, we're approximately 40 
ish percent of our print order comes from across the country. Our business continuity plan is such that, uh, you know, if, if for whatever reason the College Point plant were not operable any longer, we would fall back on our two local um, uh, national sites, uh, in w one being in Philadelphia, the other being at the Boston Globe, and we would accelerate or go to earlier close times and they would be printing for us. We also have reciprocal agreements um, and testing that we've done um, over the last couple of weeks with local publishers, the New York Daily News, uh, North Jersey Media and, and, and Rockaway, New Jersey, and uh, with the uh, New York uh, Post uh, facility in the Bronx. So we have a reciprocal agreements whereby if they needed us, we would print and vice versa. So we've, you know, our, our business continuity plans were, were, were uh, pretty, well, um, pretty well planned out prior to this. It just has a different flavor of it now with what's going on with uh, the COVID virus. Thank you. Uh, li yeah, likewise, uh, okay, our two plants are independent. We are operating in independently right now. And they are actually a backup for each other. And the night shift itself, because within each plant, there are also two night shifts, which are, they work two nights and they are off two nights. So again, these are backups for each other. So in the event that any team is affected, the other team will, instead of working two nights, you have to extend their number of nights that they work or the other way is to deploy the day shift into the night shift. So actually we have uh, plans, contingency plans for at least two hits uh, or at least two wave of uh, or two areas affected by the virus. So that's our contingency. We have six group of people actually working. Thank you. Uh, here's a question about the postal services because some of the papers of course go, go, with, the, with, go with the mail and then uh, in France, they only deliver three times, three working days a week. How, how, how do you see that pro progressing in, in your countries? Uh, Todd, if you could start. Yeah, I mean, a very limited, you know, our mail sub uh, subscriptions are really rather small um, across the country. Um, so, you know, thus far we haven't, we haven't seen an impact, but again, it's a very small portion of our um, distribution actually goes via the mail. Um, but, you know, thus far we haven't seen any issues with that. Uh, for Singapore, being a very small country, we do not have uh, so postal subscriptions. So our papers are delivered daily. And on the delivery front, actually, there are also contingency plans built in for people falling sick and who will take over. So we have contingency plans over there. Okay, great. Uh, here is a question that uh, is, is quite relevant because uh, both of you have been working from home quite a lot and it seems like uh, a lot of the management is working from home. So people are wondering how do you manage your workforce working from, from, from home all the time? How do you monitor your staff if you're all, always uh, you're not, in, not at, at the location? Uh, for myself, actually, I have not worked from home, not a single day yet. I'm always at the plant. Because I believe that if I were to run the operation, I have, I have to lead the people, I have to be at the plan. Todd? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, with, with the number of folks that we have working from home across the company, it's, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, communication's key. Um, we're, you know, the, the line managers and supervisors, um, for those folks that, are, that have staff working from home, are ramping up their, you know, weekly communication and we're doing Google Hangout and Zoom meetings. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, I think it's just keeping in contact with, with the folks and, and um, you know, and part of it is trust, right? I mean, it, it's, uh, um, you know, there, there are issues though, obviously, when, when schools are closed and there's, um, you know, the children are at home and, you know, it's, it's, it's not quite as easy as it might sound. So we've tried to be empathetic to the situation of our employees are going through and, you know, trying to ask everyone to, you know, to kind of do their best um, under the circumstances. But we're really relying on the line managers and foremen and, and uh, you know, the individual department managers stay in close contact with, uh, with their employees and with their staff. Um, both to understand what's going on from a work perspective, but also to be considered about what's going on with their, 
you know, family situations, many that are, you know, taking care of children or maybe taking care of their elder, you know, parents or grandparents or what have you. So it is, it is taxing and, uh, we're, you know, we're trying to be empathetic for the, for the employee situation as well. Here's a question for both of you as well. The, uh, quite a lot of, 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 of workers all around the world now are taking part-time work. I mean, the, the jobs have been cut down to part-time uh, and maybe salaries cut. What, what do you see coming in, in, in your corporations as in, uh, in that respect? So far for SPH, the management, uh, we have taken a pay cut. Uh, starting from our CEO and uh, all the manage the top management people, as far as the staff is concerned, uh, their salary maintains. Uh, going forward, we do not see a very uh, big cut coming, uh, at least not in the near future for the the working level people. Uh, and, and you know, thus far we haven't had any. Um you know, staff reductions or compensation changes as a result of the COVID virus. Um, you know, we will, you know, closely keep an eye on it from a business perspective, but right now we haven't had uh, any of that thus far. There are other, you know, major newspaper companies across the country that have announced, um, you know, similar adjustments and furloughs and, uh, and so on, but we, uh, we have not, uh, we have not done that, so. Good. Uh, we're almost out of time, but uh, I think I want to end with a, with, a, with a good question here that comes here. What is the post positive opportunities that you, you think you might have, uh, might have emerged from this crisis? And then I'll start with you, Todd, and then Svi, Svi, you can take over and, and you can also add to this final question some thoughts about going forward into the future. Um. Well, what's a positive that has come out of this? Um, you know, I, I think the fact that we've been able to mobilize and, and effectuate the changes in terms of going to, uh, you know, remote working has been has been a real positive. Um, kind of speaks to the resilience of our of our staff, and um, you know, I think you know, to a T, uh, you know, across all departments of the, of the company has really kind of. Uh, brought everyone, even though we're working separately, has brought us um, in some respects closer together as a result of this. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to say it's been a positive experience uh, because it's been taxing, but, uh, you know, certainly there's been some positive aspects of it in terms of, um, you know, how we as a company have responded uh, to the virus, so. Sweet. Yeah, I, I think it's a good, uh learning experience going forward because 17 years ago Singapore had SARS and that was uh, you know there was some basis that we built on from the current experience uh, how we, we manage the, the situation and how we distribute our job and actually one thing that come out from this is that it also shows that the paper is a essential product whether it be in the printed version or the uh, digital version. I think more people come to realize or even the government is realizing that you know, it is a means of communication whereby in a crisis uh, it can reach out to, to the mass. Uh, that's something that I, I think is positive in, in that perspective whereby uh, because readership has been dropping, people has not been, uh, at least the younger generation has not been reading much in terms of the papers. I think this uh, experience itself will change somewhat for some people, knowing that the paper is actually something that they can rely on for information. Thank you. Thanks to, to both of you. Lim Sui Yao from, from the, the Singapore Press Holding and Todd Sosia from New York Times. I, I really appreciated you being with us today. And uh, I also thank all, thank all the participants in the webinar. We had really good questions. I will, we will send out a recording of this to the, to the mail list and we will also have it accessible on our webpage. Next week, we will have suppliers talk to us, uh, two or three suppliers of, of equipment for our industry. And they will be uh, in a similar situation that we do now. They will start up and, and then we'll have some questions. 
and it's the same time. We're next Wednesday at two o'clock Central Eastern Time. So I thank you today and uh, hope you have a good rest of the week and good weekend. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.